Good morning. Elvis Carrera, good morning to you, brother from Lima, Peru. Uh, good to see you this morning. Uh, fabulous. Hopefully everything is going good in down in Lima, Peru. And uh, so good to see all of you this morning as you're beginning to chime in. Um, at Peace Through the Word, uh, a devotional ministry of Peace in the Valley Lutheran Church in uh, Benson, Arizona. Coming to you this morning early at my uh, residence study here at Sun City, Oro Valley, Arizona. And I'm getting ready to go to a, a, a pastor's meeting. Uh, I have to preach this morning in our divine worship at that meeting. And uh, so uh, I'm coming to you early. I look a little different too, possibly. So uh, thank you for that. <laughs> thank you for allowing me to uh, to be able to come to you in that in that. Uh, in that vein. Um, this morning we're going to talk about a subject that perhaps we're struggling with right now as we speak. And that is the subject of anger. So let me ask you, are any of you out there angry this morning? You know, I'm, I'm going to confess, you know, I am. Uh, you know, supposedly we should have had a decision <laughs> as to who's gonna be our, our president of the United States of America for the next four years. We don't, because we've got a lot of corruption, a lot of uh, illegal activity going on. We've got a lot of criminal activity going on within the political process here in the United States. And so uh, we don't have a decision. Um, but that's just one of many things. And there are many things that I'm angry about. I'm angry about our political situation. I'm angry about a lot of things. And uh, perhaps you are too, you know? So how do we handle our anger? How do we navigate that emotion? As Christians, God has <laughs> some incredible things to say about that. God gets angry too, so does Jesus. I mean, look what he did at the temple when he overthrew the tables and took a whip and started whipping people and stuff like that. You know, so Jesus knows what it's, what it's like to be angry, all right? So, we're going to look at that this morning, and I pray that it's going to bless you, but I also pray it's going to give you real peace uh, as we uh, navigate this particular emotion. So, brothers and sisters, we come together in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouths will declare your praise. Make haste, O God, to deliver us. Make haste to help us, O Lord. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. So, brothers and sisters, the passages of Scripture that I want to share with you, uh, first one is going to be Psalm uh, 4. And uh, listen to what the psalmist says with regard to our anger. He says, Answer me when I call, O God of my righteousness. You have given me relief when I was in distress. Be gracious to me and hear my prayer. O men, how long shall my honor be turned into shame? How long will you love vain words and seek after lies? But know that the Lord has set apart the godly for himself. We've been set apart uh, for God. We have. You're not, we're not our own. We've been set apart for God, all right? Um, the Lord hears when I call to him. So here's, here's the instruction. God says, be angry and do not sin. So it's not a sin to be angry. It can be a sin if we don't handle it appropriately, all right? So ponder uh, in your own hearts, on your beds, and be silent. Offer right sacrifices and put your trust in the Lord. Not in the political system, not in Washington, D.C., Phoenix, Arizona, your opinions, your beliefs, your traditions, whatever. <laughs> but put your trust in the Lord. Boy, I can't overemphasize it because... Christians aren't doing that, let alone the heathen out there. 
All right. That's not happening. There are many who say, who will show us uh, some God, some good? Lift up the light of your face upon us, O Lord. You have put more joy in my heart than they have when their grain, with their grain and their wine abroad, abound. In peace I will both lie down and sleep. For you alone, O Lord, make me dwell in safety. Only the Lord makes us dwell in safety. No, no other thing or persons. Only the Lord. Only the Lord. Did you hear that? It's only the Lord. Okay? <laughs> we need to hear that. So I pray that will resonate. So that's Psalm. Now I want to share with you Ephesians. I want to share with you Ephesians chapter 2, starting in, in verse 11, just two verses. And he says, St. Paul tells the Christian church at Ephesus, he says, Therefore, remember that at one time you Gentiles in the flesh, called the uncircumcision by what is called the circumcision, which is made in the flesh by hands. Remember that you were at that time separated from Christ, alienated from the commonwealth of Israel, and strangers to the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. We were, we were separated from that, but God brought us together. Okay? So listen to how our devotional unpacks this subject for us this morning and praying that that's going to bless you and give you real peace. Our devotional says, I have anger issues. And I think we all do. Let's just be honest. I think we all have anger issues. Growing up with alcoholic parents, I felt I was caught between Scylla and uh, Carbidus. In Greek mythology, Scylla was a perilous six-headed sea monster, actually a rock shoal. And I can't pronounce this, Carabinatus, I guess, was a whirlpool-like monster. Together they threatened many a ship and soul. My father's anger was explosive. My mother held her anger in. Fight or flight, folks say. Neither serves the holy purposes of God in the lives of his children. Thanks be to God that through our Savior, Jesus, the walls of hostility have come down. Once alienated from God by our sin, we have been brought near and reconciled to him. By establishing peace between us and our Heavenly Father, Jesus has forged a way for us to be at peace with one another, even in spite of tremendous chaos. <clears throat> to be sure, that way is never easy. The way of sorrows and the cross prove that. Yet what fruit we enjoy when we kneel beneath that cross and hear the Savior's word of forgiveness. We are set free from the bitterness and strife that would otherwise consume us and drive us apart. Our choice is not that of a rock or a hard place. Instead, it is a joyful place as we pass between Jesus' two pierced palms. It is a joyful place to be forgiven and now forgiving in the Savior's name. Good words for us this morning, amen. So allow me to please pray. Forgiving Savior, having established peace with me, lead us now to be persons of peace. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Pray that's going to really bless you this morning uh, as you navigate these challenges that are before us. Amen. So this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. O Lord, have mercy. O Christ, have mercy. O Lord, have mercy. Brothers and sisters, together let's pray the wonderful prayer our Lord taught us, the Lord's Prayer. And so together we pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. So brothers let's, and sisters, let's uh, profess the Christian faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed, which uh, really accentuates what we believe. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and he sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Hear our prayer, O Lord, and let our cries come to you. In the day of our trouble we call upon you, for you answer us. Hide your face from our sins and blot out all our iniquities. Create in us a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within us. Cast us not away from your presence, and take not your Holy Spirit from us. Restore to us the joy of your salvation, and uphold us with a willing spirit. Because your steadfast love is better than life, my lips will praise you. For you have been our help, and in the shadow of your wings we will sing for joy. Teach us your way, O Lord, that we may walk in your truths. Unite our hearts to fear your name. We give thanks to you, O Lord our God, with our whole heart, and we will glorify your name forever. May all who seek you rejoice and be glad in you, and may those who love your salvation say evermore, God is great. Save your people, bless your heritage, be their shepherd, and carry them forever. Give ear, O Lord, to our prayer, and please listen to our plea for grace. We pray. We thank you, our Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept us this night from all harm and danger. And we pray that you would keep us this day also from sin and every evil, that all of our doings in life may please you. For into your hands we commend ourselves, our bodies and souls and all things. Let your holy angels be with us, that the evil foe may have no power over us, Amen. So brothers and sisters, let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless us, defend us from all evil, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Well, I really pray that that will um, really bless you and give you real peace uh, as we navigate the various challenges uh, that are before us in our lives and as we deal with the emotion of, ang <clears throat> of anger. And I pray that we will channel that anger in a proper way so that good comes of it, all right? So again, let me thank you so much for joining us. And uh, Elvis Cadetta, thank you so much. And good morning to you for joining us all the way from Lima, Peru this morning. Our prayers continue to go out for, to all of you, uh, wherever you may be, and praying that... Uh, uh, God will work out everything in accordance with his divine will, for which I know he, do, he will and, and, and does. And uh, so uh, it is so good to see you. So go in God's grace and mercies today and serve him as he gives you those opportunities. And until we meet again, blue skies, wheels up, flaps retracted, and God's blessings. Amen. Amen.